Pastor Israel. Let's go. Come on, give the Lord a hand, praise. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. I smell revival in the building. I, I feel breakthrough in the building. I feel that miracles are already being released in the building. Hallelujah. In the sanctuary. I got 10 people, 20, 30 that believe that. Come on, come on, magnify the name of Jesus. Glorify the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Does it matter the struggle? Does it matter the pain? I got to worship that no devil in hell can take away. I can go through the process. I can go through the pain, the confusion, the depression, whatever it is. But when I come in contact with the Lord, when I come in agreement with God, and all things change it's for the good of those who believe. I believe God has a miracle for me. I need you to lift up your hands and say, Lord, give me a miracle today. Lord, I need a miracle today. As we embark in this journey about miracles, God, we release that miracle, believing in agreement, in agreement with you, God, that you are able to do it and can do it today, right now, in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. You may have a seat. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't sit your worship, but glorify the Lord in your this day. Amen. The God is good. Amen. All the time. The church looks beautiful. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are just, just moving forward with this series, Miracles. I believe that last Sunday was powerful, and I believe that God still and will continue to speak to our lives because there are people in this room that still need to release and activate a miracle in their life. So we spoke about miracles, amen, last week. But this week, amen, with the theme of miracles, a, my theme or my topic is um, your miracle requires movement. Touch three people and tell them your miracle requires movement. Come on, tell them it's time to move. It's time to provoke. It's time to, hallelujah, provoke God for your miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, you got to say that again. Touch your neighbor and tell them, amen. I believe that you got to move in order to receive your miracle. Amen. Praise the Lord. You see, throughout the Bible and scriptures, you find many examples of ordinary people facing extraordinary challenges in their life. I don't know about you, but every day, weekly, we have challenges. Can I get an amen? Can, can someone just say amen? You know, you can be good today, and five minutes later, you got a challenge, and you're going through something, amen, praise the Lord. And, 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 and it, we, but although we're going through all these challenges, and, and we're going to talk about somebody, a story in the Bible that relates to this movement, that, that faith, that miracles require movement, we also, hallelujah, have to understand that we need as, to, as believers to have an unwavering faith in God. So no matter the circumstances, no matter what we're going through or the season, your faith cannot be, cannot be wavering. Your faith has to be unwavering. You have to believe God for what he said over your life. Declare it no matter the circumstances. Your attitude, your worship should not, hallelujah, reflect what you're going through. Hallelujah, it should be the opposite. I might be going through, but no one or nothing will steal my worship or my devotion or my consecration or my beliefs in Christ Jesus. I stand in faith, believing what God said over my life, no matter what I'm going through. So unwavering, what is that word unwavering? It means um, strong and steady, to, to be um, constant and steadfast, uh, uh, um, not, not wavering, not, not uh, diminishing what God has declared over his word. You know, believing with certainty that God said this is going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know at what time it's going to happen, but I know that in me, in my house, will serve the law not only will serve the law but i'm going to make sure that i'm doing everything in my human power to come in agreement with god and to please the lord with my lifestyle and then i can cry out to the lord lord i need a miracle because my life is aligning to that miracle come on i'm in other words i'm celebrating my miracle before i receive my miracle come on how do i celebrate my miracle coming to church how do i celebrate my miracle believing god reading his word uh, praying and fasting and doing everything that God says for a believer to do, although I still don't have my miracle. But I know that I'm pressing and I'm pushing and I'm believing God for it today. Can I get a witness today and say, I 
need my miracle today, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we want to go into the story about the woman of issue of blood. Many of us know that story. And it's a testament of, of the healing power of faith in God. It is a testimony of the healing power and faith in God. It is an incredible journey that teaches us in this story the imp uh, certain important lessons. One of the lessons is we need to trust God. Say, I need to trust God. If you have your notes and you're writing for the old groups, you have to write this down because you have to discuss that a believer has to always trust God. Do we trust the Lord? Do we only trust him when we got food in the fridge, amen? When the bills are paid, amen? When, when, the, when the journey with our spouse is good, when, when, when we haven't been fired from our job, but can we still trust God, although we're in a pit? Hallelujah, but we're waiting to be in the palace. Come on, can we still trust God when we don't know why I'm going through this, when I'm doing everything according to his word? Can we still trust? So we have to not only trust, we have to be persistent. Write that down. We have to be persistent in the Lord. Persistent. It's not just one time knocking on the door. Persistent is, is seeking it and searching and, and diving in and going deeper every day. Saying, God, I, I'm going to continue to believe. Uh, it's not happening when I thought it was going to happen. Uh, it's going sideways. It's going uh, the reverse. But I'm still going to be persistent. Searching hallelujah, for the answers. Searching for your heart and, and, and aligning myself to your will. It is a divine intervention. When we wait on God, God begins to do what you can't do. Come on, what man can't do, what people can't do. It doesn't matter, hallelujah, what condition you're going through. The Bible said that this woman was facing 12 years of a, a, a condition in her life that she could not control. How many know there are things in our lives that we can't control? Come on, come on, come on. There are things that are that just comes out of nowhere, out of left field, that we cannot control. There are other things that we are born with it. There are other things that we have this illness that we didn't call this illness to come. I don't know how many can cancel diabetes. Come on. Stop saying my diabetes is not your diabetes. I cancel that spirit in the name of Jesus. My high blood pressure. I don't have high blood pressure. I cancel that in the come on. I'm declaring healing for those who are sick in the building. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop claiming that it's yours. Release that out. Send it back where it came from. So this woman of Israel blood had a, a, a medical condition for 12 years. You know what's 12 years? It's such a powerful story that it is mentioned in the three gospels. That's how powerful it is. And every gospel teaches it and, and elaborates a little bit more on the story. There must be a reason that it speaks so much about it. It, there must be a, a reason that every, uh, every prophet, apostle added a little bit more about the story so you can learn. And it's found in Matthew chapter 9, 20, 20, 22. It's also found in, in Mark 5, 24, 34, and also Luke's 8, 43, 48 mentions. And it talks about and it demonstrates the power of Jesus Christ. It's the importance of faith and perseverance. It's, it's telling us that no matter what's going on, you have to believe God. But we have to have an understanding of the story of this woman. Although she was afflicted with, with this, this hemorrhage and this blood coming out of her for 12 years, this issue. She also had a, a social issue. That she was isolated from the church. She was isolated from people. She had no rights to be amongst those who were clean and those who were healed and those who, who was prosperous and those uh, 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 priests and, and, and the church. She was pushed away as an outcast. How many feel that way right now? Come on. If you don't fit in because you have a certain situation or a problem. So not only that she was dealing with this for 12 years, the illness and the sickness, she was dealing with people rejecting her. People giving her a no. People saying, get away from me. Stay away from me. Now you're all alone. This I'm talking about religious people as well. Come on, somebody. Telling her you don't fit. You, you can't be around me. You're sick and you're going to stay like that and you're going to die. Don't contaminate me with your issues. Come on, somebody. So she's dealing with a law that was put in place. And it was the, the Levitical law which deemed her unclean. Say with me, unclean. 
So if you look at Levit Leviticus chapter 15, verse 19, 33, you got to read this at home because it gives you a story of, uh, of all the uh, restrictions that this woman had, not only dealing with doctors and dealing with issues and dealing with trying to get healed, she also was oppressed by the system. Come on, I'm teaching right now. Because of the law, this woman and any, any other or anyone she touched was considered contaminated unclean anything she touched if she touched the speaker it was unclean she touched a clothes it was unclean she touched somebody it was unclean and according to this law you had to either wait five or seven days or eight days to be processed uh, of uh, and to be clean from that from that sin uh, and and also have to do some sacrifices but in her case, the issue continued because she kept bleeding. So there was no way out of this. Come on, somebody. Imagine the stress, the pressure, the anxiety she had also. I was also thinking about this, that this is, this is what the religious laws do to the church today. This is what religion does to the church today. Oh, you don't have a tie on. He, how can you be preaching like that? Oh, he doesn't have a suit. You know, come on, all these laws, man-made laws, amen, and doctrines made by man. Come on. I said, could someone lift up their hands and say, I'm free by the blood of Jesus. I am sanctified by the blood of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. I don't need these man-made rules. Jesus set me free. Is anybody free in this building to give God a praise for being free? Free from damnation, free from, from, hallelujah, from all oppression of the law. I am free by Jesus. Hallelujah. And it says that she spent all her money, Pastor Erika, on doctors. She spent everything. She was searching for a miracle. She was searching for healing. Have you ever been there that you're on a search? You're on a pursuit. People don't understand your, your, your issues. People on the, on the, uh, don't understand your, 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 why you're so dedicated and why you're so devoted, devoted and why you're pressing on uh, 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 um, pushing forward. And people are saying, how can she still praise when they already know what you're going through? How can she still be worshiping when her husband left her? Amen. How can she still be pra praising when her son is in drugs? Amen. Because they are believing God for that miracle. This is why you still praise in the middle of your storm. This is why you still worship when all things don't make sense and then when everybody comes against you you say wait a minute my God is for me and my God is not against me and I'm more than a conqueror who am I preaching to in this building I believe God has a word for you today that if you push forward if you press forward you will receive your miracle today but think about this woman what she's going through I believe that after reading this law and what she was under, the pressure of society, the pressure of the, the Levitical law and, and all these things that were put in place, I was thinking, I was like, she said, they said that she spent all her money in doctors and she would not get healed. She would not get better. She got worse spending all her money and going all over the place. Many of us go to psychics and people go to psychics and go to palm readers and, 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 and look at the horoscopes and all kinds of stuff, try to find a reason for this and find an answer for this. Listen, there's no other way way but Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way but Christ Jesus. Amen. You're seeking help or in the wrong places. You're seeking deliverance in the wrong places right now today. I believe without a doubt in my mind that you will leave this building with a miracle. I, I'm, I'm prophesying to somebody right now. I, I've been prayed up. I'm ready. I say, God, release miracles in this building. Not for me, not to glorify me, your pastor, but to glorify the name of Jesus. Come on. I'm ready ready to see eyes open. I'm ready to see ears hearing the word of God. I'm ready to see the lame walk. I'm ready to see those with cancer set free. I'm ready to see diabetes leave your body. I'm ready to see generational curses leave you today. In the name of Jesus, I believe it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Come on. It's happening. Give me some gospel. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening right now. Right now, I release this in the atmosphere. I believe it's happening in the atmosphere. Somebody just got to touch the Lord. Somebody. Hallelujah. Against all possibility. Now I was studying this and I'm thinking, if everything, if anything she touched was unclean, 
if anybody came in contact with her was unclean instantly, that was someone else putting their life at risk. Their reputation. Their, their spiritual state at risk for someone else. I don't believe that the doctors actually sat with this woman. I don't believe after looking at all this, I'm thinking that she will go to the doctor wherever he was located at that time and they will probably shout what she needed to do. From afar, take this pill, wash over there, move back, move back, a little bit back. Or maybe just throw the medication or whatever they thought can heal her and she will grab it from the floor. Think about that. You thinking you're in a bad state? You thinking you're, you're going through it? This woman went through it. So she goes through all this drama and all this hurt and all this rejection, all this pain. And she hears now about Jesus. The Bible says in Matthew 9, 20, 22, says, and let us, let us go through this first. Just then a woman, I don't know if I have the verses up there. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 20, it says, Just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. I see, the, I see it up to here. It says, just a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloth. Matthew 9, 22 says, Jesus turned and saw her. Come on, say Jesus turned. Come on, there's a turn for you. Come on, I, I just, let's stay right there. There's a turning round. There's a turn, hallelujah. Maybe you have been unnoticed. Maybe no one saw you before. No one cared about you before, but someone is turning to look at you today. Come on, and then he turned and saw her. And he said these words, take heart. Daughter, say with me, daughter. The only time Jesus will say daughter, because you were Jewish. You were part of the lineage. He didn't call anybody daughter. He's calling you daughter today. Come on, he's calling you daughter. He's calling you son today. Come on, he's personalizing this. Amen. Come on, he's personalizing your miracle today. And he says, daughter, he said, your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that, at that moment. But I was thinking, it says that, in verse 21, it says she said to herself, it reads that she said to herself. I'll say it again. It's, it says that she said to herself. Sometimes you're not going to find a pastor. Sometimes you're not going to find a leader. Sometimes you're not going to find a, a priest, a, 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 a believer next to you. But sometimes you got to say to yourself. Come on. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself. Come on. Come on. I'm speaking to somebody right now. Stop acting like a victim. Speak to yourself. Speak to that spirit of the living God inside of you. Speak a word of life over yourself. Say right now, rise up. Believe God. I'm, I'm going to put my hands upon myself and believe God for my miracle. Sometimes I can't get to the pastor. Sometimes I can't get to the preacher, but I'm going to pray on myself. I'm going to go into my room, hiding place and say, Lord, I need a miracle. She said, you know what? She saw Jesus passing by, the crowd, the multitude, the mayhem was going on, and she tried everything else. Sometimes you got to try something different. Sometimes, maybe the way you've been praying is not enough. Maybe you got to say, Pastor, give me the keys to the church. I got to get to the church at 5 in the morning. I'm in pursuit for my... Hey, hey, hey. Maybe you just got to change it up a little bit. Hallelujah. Maybe you got to stop talking to some people and say, you know what? I got to strategize this a different way. She, she, she strategized this. She planned it, Pastor. She's like, mm. Mm, Crowd, I'm unclean. Mm -hmm. It's my moment. In my moment, I'm going to make something happen up in here. I, I know who he is. It's not, it's not enough knowing who he is. I know who he is. I know what he carried. I know he's Jesus. I got to do something else that, that, that requires movement. That requires faith. That requires that everybody leaves my side. I'm going in. She planned it. She strategized it. She said she came out with a plan. What is your plan? 
she strategized her way. She said, you know what? And think about this. She's, she's, think about the dilemma here. She, she's going to put at risk the crowd. Never thought about that, right? If the doctors was away, she's putting, around, she's putting at risk to become unclean, the apostles. Leaders, the priests that were there, the crowd, the men. What do you think? She just walked through the crowd saying, Excuse. and anybody departed, the rest seat departed. Oh, she's coming. Hallelujah. Ah. No, 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 no. She pushed people. Get out. Get out. I'm coming through. Get out my way. Get out. Sorry you're unclean now. Sorry you're unclean. But I'm in pursuit for my miracle. I know my master will clean you up. But I'm Push, 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 come on, thrust to please. Just leave people trying to push your way through. Push your, get out, get out, get out. Stop hearing that voice and get out of my way. Stop listening to people, get out of my way. I got a plan, I'm sticking to the plan. If I only can touch, I don't need to embrace. I just got to touch sometime. It's not enough to come to church. It's not enough hearing, you got to touch them. Many of us come to church, but we don't touch them. That's what, she, that's what Jesus said. Someone touched me in a different way. Woo. I'm talking about leaders were touching. Deacons were touching. Prophets were touching. Everybody was touching. But someone came with a different touch. I need you to come to the altar today with a different touch. Maybe you don't have it all put together. Maybe you've been rejected. Maybe the crowd is all around you. Maybe the noise is around you. But I need you just, you don't have to have everything of Jesus. You don't have to know everything about Jesus. All you need to do is a touch. Just a touch. Just a touch. Come on. Just a touch. Maybe your praise can touch them today. Maybe you're lifting up your hands. Good. Good. Attract. Him looking at you. Come on, do something out of the box. Get out your seat and say, God, I'm about to touch. I'm about to just touch, touch. Hallelujah, I touch you with my worship. I touch you with my life. I touch you when I pray. I touch you, God. I don't have to hug all of you. I just need a touch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just a touch. Once it says, Mark chapter 5, verse 24, 34 says this. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. I need you to visualize this. It's not your pastor making this up. The Bible says there was a large crowd around Jesus. Not only a large crowd, Jesus himself was distracted when, when Hyro came. And said, I, my daughter is, is dying and I need a miracle. This is this all is happening at the same time. She's like, oh, I'm about to, I'm about to touch. Now Jesus, instead of, hallelujah, she's probably feeling, now my opportunity is gone because now this other dude needs a miracle. Now someone else has an issue. It's okay that someone else came to the front first. You're still getting your miracle. I come to tell somebody, it's not who came first. It's that you just came. You don't need to be first. You just got to arrive. Arrive where Jesus is at. Hallelujah. He healed the, the, the daughter. Hallelujah. The daughter of Hyro. He healed the woman of the issue of blood. He heals you today. It says, look what Matthew 9, 20, 22 says that this woman, it, it, and actually, let's go to Luke. You know, you have to fight for what you want. That's a word for you today. You have to fight. Sometimes healing can fall on your lap. Sometimes it, God just do it. He just does it. Other times, you got to fight for what you want. There are people that fought four years for their career, and you can't fight for a miracle. You can't fight for, for, for aligning yourself in the will of God. You got to do something. You know, to, the woman of Israel of blood was healed because she, she, didn't just, she wasn't just hoping Jesus would notice her. She wasn't just asking him to heal. She went after her healing. She went after it. There was action in her part. She didn't just sit there and wait it. Hopped herself. 
Bible says that when the angel moved the, the waters, and that, that brother that was also lame, the first one that got in the pool was healed. He had a, arrived there. Luke chapter 8, 42 says that Jesus was on his way. The crowd, oh, this is what it says, that the crowd almost crushed him. Look up, look at the challenge that she had to overcome all these obstacles that Jesus himself was crushed. That's why she said, you know what? I'm, there's no way I'm going to be able to hug this man. There's no way that I'm going to be able to even get in front of him. So from behind, I just got to touch a little bit of him because of the multitude. Only one touch in his robe. She was healed. And that is the evidence of the power of Jesus here today. That all you need is a touch. How many, how many received that touch one day and Jesus just turned it around? Can I get a witness in this room that just touched the heart of Jesus and say, Lord, I need you yes to, yes to Jesus. And all of a sudden, everything began to change. Can I get a witness in this room and say, Jesus turned it around for me in my home. Hallelujah. Can I get somebody grateful in this building that said, hallelujah, I fought my way out of the world. And now I'm a believer in Christ and the light of Jesus is all over my home. It is evidence that this woman fought obstacles. Listen, almost nothing of value we desire comes without resistance. Nothing of value that we desire comes without resistance. Like the woman of issue of blood, there may be people standing between your miracle and your blessing. Come on, listen to me. There might be someone in your way from your miracle that is putting doubt in your mind, that is not speaking life over you, that doesn't believe what you believe, that doesn't have the foundation that you, found, that you have, and all of a sudden what was about to occur is put on delay, is put on hold because of lack of faith, amen. But I'm looking for people that can activate their faith today and say, I am believe God for a turnaround in this day right now. Hallelujah, our time of disbelief, hallelujah, sometimes keeps us away from our miracle. I don't want disbelief in this building. I want to believe God. I need believers that can say yes to God. God. Hallelujah. That he is able and exceedingly and abundantly able to do what he said he will do. Can I get an amen in this building? Regardless of what struggle am I going through, I believe that God is able. Having struggle doesn't necessarily mean that what God has for us will not happen. Just having struggle. Waiting doesn't, doesn't mean that God is not going to do it. Sometimes you just got to fight your way through against every wind that is coming against you and saying, this day I am determined to see the glory of God. There are keys here. Number one, power of faith and perseverance. Her actions reveal the importance of seeking a touch from God. Even when it seems impossible. How many have felt disconnected when you just don't, when you don't, when you stop that relationship and that fellowship with the Lord? How many feel empty? Oh, we got five people that are honest here. Come on. How many know that the struggle of life puts us in a place sometimes that you can't even pray? That you can't even find your way to the church. That, that it's overwhelming. Hallelujah. And, and, and tell me you still feel God. Tell me you still, it, it, you have to stay connected. You have to stay touching the Lord, amen. You have to pursue that, amen, that relationship. It, it, it is the healing power that we see that is incredibly displayed in this woman of God that gives us hope that God is able to, like he healed her, he can heal me. What he did for her, he will do it for me. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. I can I get an amen this, to this day. He is the same yesterday. He leaves this story for us. Us so we can understand how to do that. There are things that we have to do in order to pursue our miracles. Lessons here. Fight for what you want. Another thing that I want to say here today is be intentional. Oh, that one, that one left. I got a, I got a yeah. Be intentional. 
it makes a difference. Come on, be intentional. It makes a difference. Try. You know what? It, it, you fail. She fell in all kinds of different ways trying to get her healing, but she got up again and tried again. Amen. Maybe you fell last week. Maybe you messed up a month ago. Hallelujah. Maybe you got it all strategized wrong. Rip that paper up and start over again. Amen. Say, God, I submit this to you again. Here I go again. Come on. And that fell again. Here, God, I'm ripping it up, but I'm still believing. I'm writing a new strategy. Here it is, God. I submit it. Which one you're going to bless, God? But I'm not going to give up. I don't, I don't want nobody in this room to give up. Press, press, push for your miracle. Your miracle requires, hallelujah, that you move by faith and not by sight. Your miracle requires for you to believe what God has predestined for your life. You know, the Bible says and teaches us that the Israelite had to fight for the promised land. The promised land for the Israelites was promised to them. That's what it calls promised land. It was promised by God. It was given to them by God. It was like, it's yours. You got to go get it. <laughs> the miracle is there. I did it already. You still got to go in there and fight that enemy and get him out. Hey, 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 I got, I got five people that understand what I'm saying. Hallelujah. The miracle was provided. God said it's yours. Hallelujah. Go and take your promised land. But because of unbelief, they had to stay stuck in the desert for 40 years. But when you believe God, hallelujah, you still got to walk into the enemy's camp and say, this blessing belongs to me. I'm going to that doctor's office and I'm going to claim my miracle. This report is void. This report is canceled. I believe God. Hallelujah. You still got to step in to the enemy's camp and take your blessing. It's not going to just fall on your lap. It's not going to be given to you. I need believers that are men up and women that can rise and say, hallelujah, I'm going for it. I'm going to take the enemy out of the camp and I'm going to pursue and take what belongs to me, what the devil stole from me. I want it back. I want my healing back. I want my health back. I want my family back. Who am I preaching to in this building? I need... I'm taking it back. Come on, I'm taking it back. I'm claiming my miracle. The Lord said that belongs to me. The Lord said that's my house. The Lord said that's my job. I'm taking it. Hey, Messiah, come on, come on, come on. Lift up your hands and say, I'm taking it. It's time to attack. Attack your miracle. Take it by force. Activate your miracle. You have to press forward. Come on, touch four, four people. Tell them, push forward, push forward. Press forward. Touch, touch three people. Come on, keep touching the people. While you touch them, they're being healed. I believe that. While you touch them, they're receiving the miracle. In some cases, you have to press past pain. In some cases, you have to press by press by disappointment. In some cases, you got to push past religion. In some cases, you got to push past people that are reject you and say you can't able. You're not able. You don't qualify. In some cases, you have to press through rejection. You have to press through gossip. In some cases, you have to press forward for your miracle. Press forward. Press through humility. Press to, through disappointments. Push forward over your past. Here's a parable that I want to leave you so you can understand what I'm talking about. Faith require action. Say that, the whole church say that with me. Faith require action. Come on, let's do it like a chorus. One, two, three. Faith action. I hear more loud on this side. This and there's less people over here. So let's all together. One, two, three. One. Harmonize, people. <laughs> Unity provokes miracles. <laughs> Lord, help me push through this. Push this. We want to be in agreement. One, two, three. <laughs> Loud of faith. <laughs> Come on, give the Lord a hand. Praise for that. That's what I'm talking about. So here we find a widow. It would be widow. 
she's, she's having a hard time. How many single moms here? There's some single moms in the building. Some parents that just, sometimes they're left alone and doing their thing. This woman needed justice. And it's found in Luke chapter 18, verse 1 and 8. And it reads the following. And I want to read it because I want, to, I want you to have this for your old group notes. Then Jesus told his disciples, this is a parable that Jesus was sharing with the disciples. And he says, then it's, it says, then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Say with me, always. He goes on and says, in a certain town, there was a judge who never, or neither feared God nor care about people's thought. Verse 3, and there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him. Say, say with me, he kept coming. Kept coming. Kept coming to him with a plea. Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time, he refused. But finally, he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think. Verse 5 said, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't e eventually come and attack me. Sometimes you got you to gotta go psycho on some people. Sometimes you got to get an attitude. I'm coming for my miracle. Get out my way. Come on, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. You got, they, they're going to look at you like you're crazy, but you're, you're in pursuit. You got a mission. You, know, you, know, you don't know what I've been going through. You don't know the pain at night. You don't know the headache, the stress. You don't know how I don't got to pay the bills. You don't know my story, so shut up and get out my way because I'm about to get my miracle. You don't know. That's why you can't judge people's praise. Oh, he's too loud. She's clapping all radical. You don't know that she got just bailed out her son from prison. You don't know that she has a son on a machine, a lifeline machine. Come on, you don't know my story. If I'm praising him, the way I praise him can give you an education about my struggle. That's why you can see people praising them in the storm, because they going through it. But in the midst of it, what the devil thought he can kill, actually reversed it into a greater praise. A greater clap. Come on, clap your way through in this building. Hallelujah. I feel it. I feel it. I said, Lord, I want to see your glory today. Lord, show me your glory in this building. What you've been prophesizing, what you've been speaking all these years, show it today. How about Soya King? My attack. And the Lord said, listen, 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 Linda. The Lord said, listen, Linda. Jesus said, listen, 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 listen. To what the unjust judge says. Listen to what the unjust just said. Listen to what he said. Verse 7 says, and will not God? Is it up there? I read over here. It's like, it's like, Im. and will not God bring about justice for his chosen? Come on, lift up your hands. Who's our chosen here? That's a word for you right now. Will not God bring justice for you? For my chosen one who cry out to him day and night? How many are crying out day and night? Will he keep putting them off? Hey, I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. Say it with me, and quickly. Oh, I, I, I believe an expedited miracle is coming for you today. That word right there. I need somebody. I need five people in this room to take ownership of quickly. Quickly. That's the word right there. Quickly. When I just do a miracle quickly, you don't have to wait the process. You don't have to delay it no more. Quickly. It, oh, come on. I feel five people getting this message right now. When I do it right now. Why not do it quickly right now? Who needs a miracle in this room? Think about it. Put it on the table right now. Say, Lord, I submit this. I submit this petition right now. Do it quickly. Do it right now. Do it right now. 
for my loved ones that pray day and night and cry out. I'm telling you, you better not give up on your miracle. You better not give up on God. He said, I hear you. I hear my chosen ones cry out to me day and night. Come on. That is, that is amazing. That, is, that should give you peace right now. That surpasses all understanding. Just to know the fact that Jesus says day and night I hear you and I will do justice in your favor whatever unjust act was released over your life I'm going to flip it and turn it around for the glory of my name hallelujah I'm about to do something in your life that, and I'm going to do it quickly I'm going to turn it around quickly you may be in depression today but that's ending right now you may be in a dilemma right now but I cancel that right now Lord, the Lord said I will turn it around right now quickly I release that word right now and I take ownership Lord do it right now. I come in agreement with that word. And I believe that you will do it today for the glory of your name. Persistent. She submitted that petition over and over again. She said, it said that she kept knocking. Many of us knock. I gave my tithing. I gave my offering. I served. One knock. It's teaching us, like this woman. A lot of doors are gonna close. A lot of rejection. A lot of a lot of confusion. A lot of be like, how you do, how, how do you respond when it's not going your way? How do you respond to God? What is your worship when all hell breaks loose? And you're under some spiritual attack. And you think it's human attack. And you think it's man-made. And it's actually Satan trying to rob you of your miracle because he knows it's around the corner. How do you respond? Amen. But she kept knocking over and over. She took no for an answer. This is what I'm saying to Satan today. Mm -mm. Not with my family. Mm. Not in my house. Mm. This sickness will not kill me. Mm, no, it's not. Hallelujah. This delay will not frustrate me anymore. Hallelujah. It's coming because I am going to be resilient. She was faithful to what she believed in. She was persistent in her pursuit of justice. Are you persistent on your pursuit of your miracle? Now back to the woman of issue of blood, desperate for a healing. Are you desperate for something new? I'm desperate every week. I'm desperate every week, Lord. Desperation for more of God takes you to sanctification. When you're desperate for God, you seek him in different ways. You seek him in different ways against all social norms. She pushed through the large crowd. Faithful action, intentional. She made something different. She believed that and she did not, she not, she did not allow her past failure to dictate the present state. She did not allow her past failures ruin her and take her success today. Yeah, they wrong, they did me wrong. Yeah, it was bad. But today's a new day. Come on, stand to your feet with me today. Today's a new day. She suffered a great deal, but she believed God. She had to do something different. You need to try something different today. You know, everything she did, at that moment before that encounter with Christ, everything she did was done in private. <laughs> Every she, everything she did before seeing Christ, it was done in private. Her doctor visits were in private. Her issue was private. Her problem was private. Are you willing to expose what you're going through today? She had to let everybody know. This is why when Jesus said, who touched me? No, 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 no. The, the disciples said, everybody's touching. What kind of question is that? Everybody's pressing on you. Everybody's touching you. Jesus said, no, 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 no. 
but someone touched me in a different way. She's in that crowd panicking because she know that, that in the biblical terms, in the biblical state at that time, it was death for her, what she did. But she know, you know what she said? She confessed. It was me. It was me, Jesus. And she told everybody there what she was going through. Until I touched you. And Jesus said, your faith, your faith, woman, your daughter, your faith has healed you. Because she had to blast her issue. She had to put it in public. She had to tell everybody what she had. She put everybody at risk. And she was willing to die for it. And she said, you know what? Let me testify. But you heal me. But you did it for me. Sometimes you got to just forget about who's looking. Forget about who, who, who can judge you. You know, come to Jesus and say, you know what? It is what it is. I'm the one who's touching you today. And this is my struggle. I'm dealing with depression. I'm dealing, I'm dealing with suicidal thoughts. I have this illness. I have this issue. But I'm coming forward. I don't care who knows about it in the church. It doesn't matter. You are going to get rid of it. You are going to heal me today. I will be set free. And the rest doesn't matter. I'm going to testify. When all natural attempt fails, you need to push forward to the supernatural. What have you given up on? Why not try again? Why not have that encounter face to face with Jesus today? This woman had invisible prison walls of guilt, of shame, of, of shame that accompanied her all her life. But those walls came crushing down when she came in contact with Jesus. Just a touch. So whatever walls you have, God could demolish it today. Whatever pretense, whatever you feel that is, that is judging you and telling you it's not going to happen, you're going to remain that way. This pastor is, is radical. He's lying. The devil is a liar. I cancel every thought that's coming into your mind. How they're trying to twist what God is trying to say to you today. But if you come to the cross, how did God bless Aisha? Who else come to the cross and say, oh, just a touch, just a touch today. I don't care what people know about my business. I don't care that you know about my struggle. I don't care that you know I'm going to touch my miracle. Come on, come on. She didn't stop trying. She it required movement. Will you come? Where's your movement today? Will you push forward for your miracle? Will you press forward for your release of what you've been asking for God to do all these years? He can do it right now. Come. Will you say yes to Jesus? This is your moment. This is your season. That 